Hey everyone, it's Brian Porter. Welcome to our quick tone tips video series. We haven't done one of these in a while, so I figured I would talk about something that has been bothering me for a while, and that is the fret ends of most guitars. Those They're sticking out, they're pokey, they're lifting on the ends. Uh, most guitars that you're getting nowadays don't have a lot of time spent on the fret ends, and I've had some higher end guitars where they take a lot of extra time making it really comfortable with not only the fretboard edge but the ends of the frets themselves and the shape of that. And a lot of times if you're playing with your thumb over the top of the neck you'll notice that. If you're gripping the neck more tightly you'll notice that on the bottom parts of the frets. So I'm seeing that more and more and as the weather changes here it's very cold. Um, we get up to over 100 in the summer and it was 8 degrees last week. So your, your fretboards are going to expand, they're going to shrink, there's going to need lots of fretboard conditioning. So for one, take care of your fretboards, condition your fretboards. But today we're going to talk specifically about some quick ways you can take care of the fret ends. Um, very minimal expense on, as far as tools. I'm going to show you one, a couple ways to do it quicker, faster, make it look good. If you've got a higher end guitar, you may want to spend more time on it than we're showing here. But for this video, we recently got a classic vibe Telecaster. Great looking guitar. Uh, sounds okay. We need to put some Porter pickups in it, which we will do for a future video with this guitar. But I'm going to take you over to the bench. I'm going to show you the tools that I'm going to use on this guitar. Talk about why you might want to invest in some of these tools. I think you can get all of these for maybe under $40 total. Maybe even less if you look around for some used options. This is just a quick way to take care of those fret ends. This guitar came basically with uh, mini razor blades all the way down. Very sharp, very very pokey. Some of the frets even were were lifting slightly. So we won't talk about like more extensive stuff like that, but we'll talk about just that simple idea of how to take care of those fret ends and, and my favorite three tools to do that. And there's many other methods again. So this is our method. You might have your favorite method. You can leave those down in the comments. If you'd like to see more in detail on this fretwork stuff, let me know in the comments below as well. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's jump over to the bench and show you the tools and show you a quick technique on how to make these guitars a little bit more comfortable to play. All right, so over on the bench, these are the tools we're going to be using today. And again, because this is a couple hundred dollar guitar, I'm not really worried about going too crazy on exactly professionally polishing these. I'm just trying to get this more comfortable so we can use it as a, as a shop demo. And so our demo guys are not mad at us when we slice their hands open. So we're going to start with some fret erasers. As you can see, these are very used fret erasers. You can find these um, in packs on Amazon. You can find them at Stumac, I believe Philadelphia Lithium Tools. They come in a variety of grits. I would recommend getting something towards the 180 grit all the way up to maybe 600 or even 1,000. You can go as complicated as you want in terms of number of grits. The more the better, the higher the grit the better, the more polish you're going to get. These make some of that polishing a little bit easier. You can also use sandpaper uh, start, starting with maybe like a 220 up to a 320 then maybe a 400, 600. At the end you're going to want to do a final polish with some steel wool. We've also used some of this Music Nomad fret polish. This is kind of more for dirty frets. It's not necessarily going to shine up your frets, but you can use some buffing compound on frets if you really want to go that far. But for now we're not going super extensive, we're just going to talk about the main tools. My favorite tool is this. This is something you can find around over fret in file. You may see it called a fret in file or a, or in file. It's got cutting ability on either side with a flat ground down surface here. Now you could probably find a really fine file and put it on a belt sander and kind of sand that down if you wanted to save some money but I think these are under twenty dollars maybe like thirteen or fourteen dollars available again at the major places I think this one was from all parts so let's show a couple quick techniques and again we'll dive into more detail this is kind of just an intro video on how you can take care of these for a budget price so let's check out the guitar up close and show you what's going on with the fret ends all right over here on the bench you can see they were the fret ends were basically hit with a 35-45 degree file. You can see some chatter marks. I'll even try to zoom in a little bit further here. You can kind of see some lines on the end of the frets. You can see how they're kind of squared off. I mean, that's basically how they do it. They'll just run that file down there and call it good. A lot of times it's not really great for the fretboard, especially 
some of these rosewood ones that will expand and contract. Um, can't stress again, like I said in the intro, how much it is important to oil your fretboard pretty frequently if you're in a dry climate uh, like we are here. That's going to help with some of this fret and sprout. But a lot of times, again, from the factory, they're going to come this way. So recommend loosening the strings. You can take the strings off. It's a good idea to just do this when you're changing strings too. So I'll just take this the E string off there so you can see a little closer. And I will go ahead and try to get a little bit better camera angle so I can show you the, the up close action of this. Some people even take their neck off. So if you have something that uh, you don't want to mess the body up, you might take your neck off as well just to have that to work freely with. Good idea to wear some gloves as well in case you have a file slip and go into your hand. That's happened before to me, so would uh, also recommend that. As All right, so specifically we're going to be focusing in on these couple frets here that you can see in the camera shot. This file again, you can see the flat surface on the bottom there, and then you have very fine, you can barely even see it in the camera here, but you have very fine cutting ability on the sides. So what you're going to do with that is you're going to run in, and typically this is not the angle that I do it, so I'll have to make it work here, but typically you can kind of put your finger on here for more control, and just roll that file sideways, just run it along the fret, just right where it starts to get sharp, and, and as you can see there I'm kind of rolling the top of the file over just to get a more rounded feel to it. Now one thing you want to watch is you don't want to create too big of a groove there. You don't want to have too big of a groove on the side of the fret. Now this is a couple hundred dollar guitar. I'm not so worried about the technique, but it's a good idea to really make sure that you're watching those ends. Some people will also do a fret file and run that off the end like a crowning file, that also works. I'll just show you kind of the rest of this method. Come in on the other side here. We're just trying to take that sharp edge off and I can go all the way down, keeping a little bit of an angle and then start to roll it as we go. So this is starting to get a nice shape on, the, on that fret end as well. You can see kind of as it, as it starts to round over and I'll get you a really close up shot as we continue to go. But I just like that more some people call it hot dog fret ends. I like companies like Tom Anderson and Sir that do a little bit more time on the frets. Okay, so now that we've got that rounded off, what we can do is take some of our fret files, our fret sponges, fret erasers, whatever you want to call them, and you can kind of work the same sort of angles. Now the nice thing about these is they're not going to they're not going to mar up really anything. And as you go, even you can take some of these grits and use them to slightly roll those fretboard edges as well. Kind of go like, like this and kind of get the whole group of uh, frets really comfortable. And that's going to take some of that hard edge off. It makes it a little bit more comfortable to hold. You can, you'd can be surprised of how well you can make some of these guitars play. So you just kind of keep working that end. Trying to stay off the top of the fret, just keeping that in mind, really working the kind of the very extreme ends of that. And we knocked off some of the heavy stuff, the hard corners with this, and now we're gonna go up through the different grits. I believe these, this is a 220 into 400, and then we're gonna finish with, I think, a 600 or maybe an 800. My These ones, the uh, actual grit numbers have worn off, so you might consider putting them in bags. I think these are the Amazon specials. And you can even see on this one, over time we've developed a groove in there as we've been cleaning up frets after leveling and and uh, starting the initial crown and polish. So now I can take that groove and I can work the end of that fret as well. So it's starting to shine up really nice again. I'm going for a quick method here. I'm not really trying to make a multi thousand dollar guitar fret job. I'm just trying to make this thing play a little bit better before we put new pickups in it. We'll go to the next grit. I think this is up near that 800 or 1000. Still kind of working the same angle here. I really like to go ahead and add that slight. It's almost like sometimes these are 90 degrees on the, the actual board themselves. So I just like to take that off slightly. You can do that quicker with maybe a 400 grit sandpaper as well. At the end, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of dust and all that so you can get a a little brush or something and 
kind of clean that up. And then at the end we'll go with some steel wool. Just kind of work that same end of the fret. Also work the edges of the fretboard, help that get rounded off. And then that looks pretty good to start off with. And, and again, this is something you can keep going. You can do more and more as you want, but let's take a closer look in at this fret job that we did here, just the end. Feels a lot more comfortable. You real honestly, you can just run your thumb over it until you feel no sharp edges and compared to these other ones there's definitely some sharp edges let's take a closer look all right so there's a look at what the frets look like before any treatment here's the first two frets you can see the ends are pretty messed up here is the progress that we've been making on that fret that we've been working on you can see it's got a little bit more round over now this is a really close camera you can still see some scratches on the top of the fret there you can see the shape starting to come together a little bit more. See how then we go down to the next fret. That thing's pretty, pretty jacked up. And you can see even that fretboard edge between those two frets is starting to look a little bit better than down here as well. So lots of work to do, but those are the tools to do it. Take your time. Feel free to experiment on lower level guitars before you work on your higher and more expensive guitars. One of the things that's important to remember about guitar repair is there's really a lot of different solutions to reaching the end goal that you're looking for. There's a lot of techniques, again, just for fret ends. This is the way I like to do it. I like to, again, I, I don't wanna do terrible work, but I wanna make sure that I'm kinda doing the work that's equivalent of the guitar itself. So again, if you've got a cheap guitar you wanna practice on, you can look for these types of files, the fret erasers, you can do it with sandpaper. If you have a favorite method, again, leave it in the comments below. Thanks for so much for watching. If you're interested in any guitar pickups, other guitar tips, sign up for our newsletter at porterpickups.com. We also have a great array of guitar pickups that you can upgrade your project guitars with as well. And again, this guitar, very excited to be putting some pickups in it soon. So look for more videos on this as well. We're going to be replacing the stock Classic Vibe pickups with uh, something from our lineup. and But before we do that, again, like I mentioned, we're gonna have to go through all these frets, just make it super playable, really fun to play. Uh, it's a great looking guitar, just needs a little bit of help, so we're gonna take care of that. Thanks so much for watching.